Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, which is a pity, because this week the National Association of Beholders wrote to tell me that I've got a face like a rucksack full of dented bells. But balls to them, I am beautiful no matter what you say, your words can't bring me down. And besides, in my own mind, I'm as pretty as literally any model you care to mention, apart from any of these. America's Next Top Model is a reality show overseen by media renaissance woman Tyra Banks. In it, a selection of chirruping skeletons are whittled down, in as much as skeletons can be whittled down, until one of them reigns supreme. During the whittling process, the competitive love dolls take part in a variety of tasks at the behest of various fashion industry giants, such as Johnny Alpha lookalike Jay Manuel, the bloke from Lazy Town, and the incredible Benny Ninja. <laughs> Ben is there to teach the girls the art of dignified posing. I think. The girls' first task involves making a controversial political statement through the medium of fashion photography. Keep in mind, fashion is a really political world where we all have different kinds of political views. We have anti-fur, pro-fur, pro-war, anti-war. Pro-vitamin shampoo, anti-frizz shampoo, it's a very broad church. I'm going to assign each and every one of you a different political view, and it's important for you to sell it, even if you do not agree with it. Sarah, you believe in life in prison. Jasmine, you believe in the death penalty. Once their viewpoints have been dished out like novelty badges, a poncy British photographer arrives to turn these ideologies into a startling photographic reality. A task some find more difficult than others. My theme today is anti-fur. Like, I hate fur. Actually, I really do like fur. I mean, it makes you look hot. I think Kathleen was very confused by the whole anti-fur kind of concept. She also didn't embrace that it was a political view. Perhaps the most difficult political view is assigned to swan-neck blonde JL, who has to oppose abortion in her photo shoot despite being pro-choice herself. I have some emotion and really believe it for that split moment. Really give it to me. To provide balance, there's a pro-choice photo shoot too, which is subtly conveyed by stripping Natasha down to her knickknacks and daubing the words my choice on her stomach. Think about the message as well. Don't, don't make it too kind of like all about modelling. Yeah, pull a face like state-sanctioned infanticide or something. Anyway, the issues keep coming. Gay marriage, straight marriage, veganism and pro-meat. I would rather see you kind of tearing apart a chicken. It would feel more editorial than picking up the hamburger. Once the photo shoot's over, the girls get some leisure time, leaving them free to get on with the important business of squealing like f***ing imbeciles at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Watching this show is like having a knitting needle rammed repeatedly in your ear. You own LA! But sexier. But the downtime doesn't last long, because soon the fruits of their labours have to be judged by a panel consisting of Tyra, Twiggy, Twatnose and this bloke. If you've ever wondered what the offspring might look like if Frank Bruno had f***ed E.T., there you go. Once judging commences, the gloves come off and the girls get bollocked for not accurately depicting the issues with their faces. If you look at your face, it's pretty, it's attractive, mm -hmm. but that is not, I'm stopping women from taking un unborn babies out of this room. No, this is. It's a very pretty picture, but I don't know whether it's, again, strong enough to put over the message. Yeah, maybe if she was eating it, like, um... I, I get the message. She loves meat. It's yeah. good. See, Twiggy gets it now. Everyone's learning something. Kathleen's even worked out her position on fur. If the animal's alive, you shouldn't kill it to make a fur coat or anything. But if it's already dead, then you could take the skin <laughs> off. Anyway, if you think the political challenge was weird, trust me, it's nothing. Later in the series, which has already aired in America, the girls take part in a taste-free extravaganza that beggars belief to the moon and back. Sometimes you need to learn how to bring a little life to a dead pose. So the shoot is, you girls are all going to be crime scene victims. Make that right hand look a little more kind of broken. There you go. You know, I think good old Ethereal J is a bit of a broken limb fetishist. I love it because her ankle looks broken. Dion took a little while to warm up, and she really didn't take much initiative to improvise. Be more dead, go on. That's it, rot for me, baby. Unfortunately, JL finds the task a tad upsetting because one of her friends had recently died. What are you thinking about, JL? My friend overdosed on a week ago. Really? Yeah. Not sure if that was the right way to go. I'll tell you why. You got into a place 
that is really, really heavy, and it allowed you not to focus on what you were doing. In the end, I think her shot was OK, but it was clear that she, had, she was not focusing on the shoot at all. Oh, the selfish, grieving cow. As before, the judges pour over the snaps, ooing and ahhing like necrophiliacs at a bus crash. Absolutely beautiful. I love the broken down leg. Me too. It's absolute genius. Oh, yeah, I'd give her one before the police arrive. It's a great picture. The look in your face is just extraordinary. I mean, That's very great. beautiful and dead. It's the first photograph I've seen of you where you actually look like a fashion model. Specifically, Sharon Tate. That's what I was going for. It may be glossy and airheaded, but ultimately America's next stick insect is more bizarre psychodrama than reality show. And amongst all the tantrums and tears, there's a real message here, something we can all take away from it. And it's this, that people in fashion are idiots. You know, when you think about it, TV as a mass medium, it's a bit like spaghetti bolognese. Yes, because everyone likes spaghetti bolognese. It's got truly universal appeal, and it's something the whole family can enjoy. But recently, there's a group of people who haven't been joining in in such great numbers, because they're too busy snacking on other things, and they've ruined their appetites for the bolognese, which is television. Yes, young people are very much the bolognese deniers of the TV world, and that's a problem. TV networks want the young, because the carefree youth of today are the hopelessly imprisoned older viewers of tomorrow. Plus, they're universally feckless and stupid, so advertisers love them. But with video games, mobiles and the internet eating into the youth's leisure time, they're tuning in less often. TV wants these young viewers back. Problem is, TV's largely run by people in their 30s and over who can only dimly remember what it's like to be young. Consequently, when it tries to court youth, telly often ends up looking as ridiculous as I do now. You get me? <laughs> There's all manner of offerings aimed at today's whippersnappers, everything from raucous celebrations of idiocy, such as Channel 4's Whatever, to the genuinely funny insult throwdowns on MTV's Yo Mama. I've seen your mama on the world's strongest man competition pulling a fire truck with her teeth. <laughs> Your mom is my cleaning lady. Some of these shows succeed and some don't. Teen angst drama Skins is one that has. But is this what young people really want? Conventional wisdom has it that young people are idiots with short attention spans who don't enjoy serious topics and want to see other young people on TV. But is that true? To find out, we invited a group of bona fide young folk to watch some stuff and because they've got such short attention spans, hold up a card indicating when they're bored. Channel 4 decided to cut out the middleman and hand control directly to the viewer. Twelve young people were selected from around the country and given a shed load of money to make absolutely anything they wanted. Welcome to whatever. James. I couldn't live without pussy and my mum. Don't put them two things together because I'll slap you. I'm most proud that I've got big boobs and when I take my bra off, they don't move. Coming up on tonight's whatever. Fanny Parts. <laughs> And what happens when you introduce a porn star to your parents? This show is gonna be fucking cool. And you know what? This TV shit is a piece of piss. Look at this. Is this how you'd like to see sort of your generation being? No, I mean, no, I know no, they're no, slightly no. older than you. As they were coming in, they like looked like complete sad. They're exaggerating it, it's too fake. You can tell they've just learnt some lines and they're just like talking nonsense, trying to make it look like that's how we are. It was just a bit. No pointless. I mean, do you find this insulting? Yeah. yeah I just think, yeah. Yeah. like, they can, they, they've made this programme, they can talk about whatever they want, and they're choosing to talk about prostitutes. There's so it's a bit shallow. behind it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, I expected them to enjoy that. Well, never mind, the shallow young sods are bound to love Audrey. Yeah, that's good right there. The theme of my party is hot couture. I love fashion and name brands. If I rule the world, the sky's the limit. Betsy Johnson, seven. Chanel. You gotta love it. I think it's just really sad to see how, how important material things are to some people. I've seen it before. It's like, for the 16th, a girl got like a Jeep or something. And I was yeah. 16, yeah. I couldn't even drive. I can't even drive, let alone have a car by then. So why watch it if it's... It works, it works. It's obviously a good idea because so many people do want to put themselves through the torture of watching My Super Sweet 16. OK, well, I'm quite relieved that none of you seem to like any of the people in it because I watch it and I wish death upon them. <laughs> uh,
Yeah, perhaps it's time to try out a wild card. The Power of Nightmares, a sobering documentary about the politics of fear. I imagine this will bore them. Increasingly, politicians are seen simply as managers of public life. But now, they have discovered a new role that restores their power and authority. Instead of delivering dreams, politicians now promise to protect us from nightmares. Now that surprised me because it actually took the longest out of everything we've shown so far for people to put the board signs up. I thought it was quite good. I think if you if you want like students and teenagers to end up being intelligent people, you've got to show them this kind of thing rather than whatever. You kind of TV tends to mould people and you know shove down ideas. If you show them informative programmes, ultimately they're going to be interested in subjects. How many of out of you would would have, if I hadn't stopped it, would have watched that through? Uh, so about, just about half of you would have watched that. I'm very interested that the, 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 the documentary is our highest scoring show so far, because I always thought all young people were idiots. That was unexpected. Less surprisingly, they all turn out to be big fans of Channel 4's feisty teen drama, Skins. You dirty little fucker! I never want to see your tiny twatty cock ever again! What's up, Nibs? Oh, hey, hey, come on, Michelle. Oh, hey, Michelle. Oh, hey, I was on, waiting Michelle. for you to tell me! Time's up, you wanker! So why is this such a big hit? It's like a guilty kind of pleasure. Guilty yeah. Yeah. It's just the so, problems that they do. It's so well written, though. Yeah, it is well written, um, and it's dramatised overly. But that's mm. that's gonna happen. It's just the Not way that very. they deal with different mm. problems because there's that um, girl who's got the eating disorder in it. I think it's kind of like a fairy tale because they're all all of the girls in it are really really beautiful. And yeah, she was a pig. Another interesting thing: about half its audience is over thirty-five. Now, why do you think they're watching it? Ha <laughs> ha those young people are hilarious. And presumably, they like to see young presenters on TV. I actually can't stand some of the younger ones, like Fern Cotton. I really can't stand her. Yeah, she's she a bit... She really annoys she's me. A bit over the top. Like Alex kind of Zane as well, people like that. That voice. Yeah. Oh, well, they probably hate old, boring programmes, yeah? If you were in charge of a TV network and you could put anything on, what would you put on? Inspector Two Morse. Ronnie's. Inspector Morse. Two Ronnies. Two Ronnies? Bob Ronnie Barker was a legend. Father Ted was funny. They used to like that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute legend. Father Ted. What no, happened to Blackadder? Good, Why can nobody write comedy like Blackadder anymore? We need more Ryan Atkins. Or, bl or Black Books. Black oh, Books Black was Black incredible. Books. You lot are weird! Except they're not weird and they're not young people, they're just people. And they're as ill-served by gormless idiocy as anyone. They just want decent programmes. Although, if you ask me, rather than sitting around moaning about telly, they should be doing national service or working down a salt mine, the fetus-faced lucky young shits.